David Mowry, or Mowry. Any fond memories of the Mid-South Coliseum and some of your best matches in that old closed forum? I, I love the Mid-South Coliseum. I really did, because it was... I always thought it was a 12,000 seater, but it's really not. It's like more like 11,000 something, but it was, it was right there on it. I guess if you packed them in there and standing room only, I probably seen uh, 13,000 in there because it was people were standing in the aisles and, but it had a great atmosphere in the mid South, especially if you had a, a pretty decent crowd because they bought wrestling. Wrestling has been a part of Memphis for, I don't know, forever since they've had TV. It's always had uh, exposure in Memphis and they've had some great talent go through there. Of course, you know, the number one guy associated with, with the mid South Coliseum and Memphis was Jerry Lawler. And then, of course, you had your legendary guys like Handsome Jimmy, uh, Dirty Dutch, Bill Dundee, Jeff Jarrett, and it just and the the honky tonk man started there. Jimmy Hart started there. Coco Ware started there. You know, a lot of guys got their start in Memphis and expanded. And actually, that's where I I learned the business more than anywhere else. Jerry Jarrett was the booker, and then Lawler was the booker, and I would watch them, how they would handle certain things, and if you paid attention, you could you could kind of learn how to do it, and booking is not so hard, it's the pacing of it, and if you pace it right, and lay it out right, and present it, it's, it's a sale job. You're trying to sell this match. How do you sell it? And a little bit of a uh, common sense helps, it. and that's all it is: is common sense. Two guys don't like each other, and they're gonna fight out. And then you, you put a prize in the way. If the, the winner gets this, the winner, the loser has to do this, and it's it's simple. Uh, I know there's a lot of um, arenas that you've appeared in over the years, and probably none so. Uh, uh, you, the Mid South Coliseum, you've appeared so many times there. Where does it rank as far as like the acoustics? Because every arena is different. But as far as acoustics, yeah, as far as like the oh, resonance was, of the fan noise, how does it work for you? Oh, it was loud because of the way it went up. It had a dome top, and of course, when the crowd come up, it's not like an open air stadium. The sound has a place to go. It can go out and it can go forward and upwards and maybe downwards a little bit, but the sound at the mid south would it would go to the up to the ceiling and stop, and it was coming back down. It was oh, it would be sometimes not the loudest I've ever heard them, but probably in the top three. The loudest I ever heard was in uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, when we were in the I don't know the name of the Coliseum, but in Beethorn. It's where the stadium is, but they introduced Carlos Colon one night. Uh, me and my tag team partner, Frankie Lane, were getting ready to, to wrestle him and his partner. When they announced Carlos Colon, it's the loudest I've ever heard a crowd because it, it reached a peak of intensity, and it's almost like my ears went, Doop. it looks like shut off. And I could still hear them, but I think that was nature's way of keeping me from bursting an eardrum. I mean, a, a, a an eardrum, an eardrum, an eardrum, because they they were loud. Never heard them any crowd that that loud ever. I'll uh, I'll get back onto the Mid South Coliseum in a second. It was at the Estadio San Juan del Bicentenario. I've really butchered that pronunciation. <laughs> But that's the what? that's the football stadium <laughs> in San Juan, apparently. Forget that. Anyway, um, <laughs> who do you know what in the Mid South Coliseum? Who drew the most, or who was the most reliable draw in that stadium apart from Lawler? 
Well, it, it had different eras. Uh, I mentioned Andy Kaufman when he would come there. He was only there three or four times, mm. but it was it was a, not every one was a sellout. But it was a, a very good house, a very good crowd of say nine or ten thousand. Uh, the Fabs, Steve Kern, Stan Lane, they drew big money. Dundee, he drew handsome Jimmy Valiant, drew big time. Uh, and but most of the the cards in Memphis were they were not centered on one match or one person. It was spread out. Me and Lawler sold it out twice because I had a a deal with Lawler. I only worked with him during that period of about it was three times in three months. And it was the first time because I was a I was a baby face. I was a good guy. It was the first time I've ever seen a crowd split with such emotion. They introduced me. Wow, much much more supportive than what I thought. Mm -hmm. Then they announced Lawler, which I thought the roof would come off. Well, his was pretty like similar to mine. So we kind of split it. So, and we had a great match. We only had three matches in three months. And why it didn't go longer, I don't know. But it, it, it was, uh, uh, and I enjoyed working with Lawler. He had great ideas. He had great execution. Uh, he was the type of guy that didn't have any wasted movement. Everything meant something. And he never got in a hurry. You never saw Lawler rushing to do anything. He took his time. And that's why he never really got hurt taking bumps, because he took his time taking bumps, too. If you gave him a backdrop, he'd go, Ooh, boom. A lot of guys take backdrop, bam, bam. But they land all kinds of ways. But, but Lawler protected himself. Easy to work with. Good interview. People believed him. And he lived in Memphis, and he didn't. And it, and what he did, uh, just just dawned on me about ten years ago. He lived in Memphis, so he cultivated that town, and he got a lot of commercials. He made a lot of money. I bet they were several years there in the eighties. He he may have made a million dollars with his commercials and all his endorsements and all that. One very quick question, then we'll move on to the next one. How many tickets? would the Mid-South sell in the glory days, you know, let's say the early 80s, if Lawler was not on the card? Well, it's according to what was hot. It's like anything else. Would, would you get sellouts without Lawler? Oh, yeah. Yeah? With, I mean, you, would, you would get the occasional sellout. Yeah, you could. But most of the sellouts were with Lawler on the card, and it was packed. It had the Fabs and the Handsome Jimmy and... You know, Bobby Eaton and Condry and Cornette and Jimmy Hart and me. And see, when you say those names, it looks like an all-star card. But that was every week because they knew us. Because we didn't have like 120 guys like AEW had. If you took that AEW show into Memphis right now or even back then, you know what you'd draw? Crickets. They say, what the hell? Because nobody identified to me. Now we're back on AEW knock. Mm -hmm. But see, I don't think anybody identifies with some of those AEW wrestlers. They just can't identify with them. But a lot of people could identify with, with Memphis wrestling because we didn't have guys from Boston coming down and being big heroes or guys from New York or guys from Chicago. We had Memphis guys, Nashville guys, Alabama guys, Mississippi guys. Guys that they, people they could identify with. So, and that means a lot when you ask somebody to buy a ticket. Because if they feel like they know you. And to close up, uh, literally closed up, the Mid-South Coliseum closed in 2006. And it does say here, for basketball, the the capacity was 11,200. So, 11,000, it seems. Well, 11,200, but that's, 
the, their floor, the, the floor space is open. Mm. It's got the basketball court. So let's say it's about 12,000. You can probably, you could probably easily put 500 chairs on the floor. So add 500 to 11,200, you got 11,700 seats you could sell. That's why I say it's close to 12,000. 